Well, hello, 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 hello. Hey, Kai. Hello. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. Hey, my voice is a little scratchy, but it's all good. <clears throat> Give it a couple of more minutes. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Just wanna say welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining Come Up Higher Ministries. This is your first time joining tonight. I am Reverend Robin Smiley, and I am so excited that you have joined us tonight for the finale of our series, The Purpose of Crushing from the Grape to the Cellar from the olive to the oil. We had a really good conversation last week talking about the olive and the uh, making of olive oil. But tonight we're gonna sum everything up with crushing is not the end. Crushing is not the end. So what I wanted to start off with, I don't know how many of you guys remember the song from Jacqueline Carr. I remember when this song was out, I was really going through and it really ministered to me while I was going through. And it came back to me as I was preparing for this lesson. The song is titled, Your Greater is Coming, right? So we're talking about the crushing is not the end. Why are we saying that? Because on the other side of that crushing is your greater. On the other side, there is glory. There's another song that says there will be glory after this. And so I just wanted to share some of these lyrics from this song just to kind of, you know, prick your heart and remind you that the crushing is not the end. But as we've been talking all along throughout the series, that there is a purpose in the crushing. And so the song starts off, it says, an olive tree has to go through three stages for its oil to run. It has to go through the shaking the beating and the pressing. And just like the olives, some of you may have felt like you go through the shaking, the beating and the pressing. You went through all of that, why? The purpose, the purpose of the crushing is so your oil will flow. We talked last week in depth about the oil that God is, is pressing out of us that through our trials and our tribulations, the, the sole purpose of that is so that we will be able to dispense the oil into the earth and to touch other people's lives with that. Hey, Robin, I see you're on. Um, and so then the song goes on to say, now your greater is coming. Meaning after this crushing, after this pressing, after this beating, after this shaking, now your greater is coming. It said, if it had not been for the shaking, I would have never been ready for the making. If it had not been for the beating, I would have never known how anointed I will be, right? We talked about the oil last week and how one of the things and purposes for the oil is the anointing. When God allows us to go through crushing, he releases a special anointing upon us that will allow us to be used in the earth realm to be a blessing to other people. And then it says, if, I, if, if it had not been for the pressing, I wouldn't be able to walk into my destiny. Wow. You know, we talked about how we want to get things our way and quickly and without any issues, without any pressure. But sometimes God allows those things to project us, to catapult us into our destiny. Why? Because our greater is coming. 
And then the, the chorus line says, he's preparing me, he's preparing me, he's preparing me. And if you've been watching uh, me on social media, you've noticed that a lot of my posts recently have been about being prepared. You know, it's all well and good to get the prophetic word that 2019 is the year of manifestation. It's all great and good to get the prophetic word that, um, that um, July is the, the month of release. It's all good, get, you know, these prophetic words, but if we don't put any action along with them, they're just prophetic words. We're just happy for the minute. We're just excited for the time that we read it or we received it. But then if we don't put any action to it, then, you know, as the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Yeah, we can talk faith. We can say we're walking in faith. We can say we're believing by faith. But there's some corresponding action that needs to go along with our faith. And that happens in the process. That happens when we are going through that fermentation stage. That happens when we are going through the pressing. And I'm not going to go back over all that we've talked about before about the different stages and phases of what the grape goes through and what the olive goes through. But all of those things are necessary in order for us to come out on the other side and to recognize that crushing is not the end, right? So what is an end? An end is a conclusion. It's a final decision. It's a, uh, it's a settlement, right? So Last week, we talked about finances and, and have a financial hardship, but God wants you to know that that is not the final place. That is not your place of settlement. You know, when you go to purchase a home, you go to closing and there's a settlement that is done. But God is saying, if you're dealing with financial issues, that is not your place of settlement. That is not your end result. He's saying to you, Open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. And he is going to show you, he's going to reveal to you how to get out of that financial rut so that you can in turn be the lender that he says we are. His word says that we are the lender and not the borrower. So in order to do that, he's going to download to us divine strategies to get us out of that place of financial crushing. Amen. So... A conclusion, again, is, is the end, it's the settlement. And God is saying, your crushing is not the end. What you have experienced is not the end. Someone may be experiencing marital issues, may have even been like myself and have gone through a divorce. And yes, that is a traumatic experience. But just like I came through it, you can come through it. Your crushing is not the end. So I want to read this scripture to you to encourage you um, from Amos chapter 9, and I'm reading it from the message translation. It says, things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings. Anthony Brown has a song out now called Blessings on Blessings. It says, blessings like what? Like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people. God, your God says so. So God is reminding us, he's encouraging us that all that we are going through, this pressing, this crushing that we have been going through is because he's, he's making new wine that he wants to dispense from us, right? He's giving us new wine skins, which is our transformation, which is a part of the process to pour this new wine into. He's pressing the, the olive and, and making the oil to come out because it's not until the olive is pressed, as we talked about last week, that you get the oil. Yes, it's washed. Yes, it's soaked. But it's not until that pressing comes that the oil actually is dispensed from the olive. So... What is what? Why are we even talking about this? Why are we even talking about this? Let's let's look at another scripture. Second Corinthians, um, chapter four. Second Corinthians, chapter four. Very popular passage of scripture, but I want to read it to you. I'm going to start in verse at verse seven, and it says, "But we have this precious treasure." The good news about salvation in unworthy earthen vessels of human frailty. 
so that the grandeur and surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God, his sufficiency, and not from ourselves. We are pressured in every way, hedged in, but what? We're not crushed. We're perplexed, unsure of finding a way out. Sometimes we can be so um, stressed out and so involved in what's going on around us and we feel like, I just, I can't see a way out of this. You know, even again, talking about our financial situations, sometimes we can so be, be so deep in debt that we can't even find a way out. But God is saying that we are perplexed but unsure on the way out of what we are not driven to despair. We're hunted down and persecuted, but not deserted to stand alone. Drunk down, but never destroyed. So that is the mindset. That is the place that we need to be in in order to understand you know, why we are going through the process of this of what appears to be just traumatic stress appears to be crushing god wants to remind us that crushing is not the end yes we are troubled on every side but we're not distressed yes it seems like we're, we're hedged in and we can't get out but we're not in despair god wants us to know that he is with us even in the pressing even in the crushing some notes I took when I was doing some study and it says the crushing isn't the olive's end, rather crushing is the way of preservation. Wow. Crushing is the way of preservation. How many of us know that sometimes God uses things to um, bring us to a place of humility, to preserve us, to even save us from ourselves? You know, sometimes the crushing that we are experiencing is to preserve us, it's even to, to save us from ourselves. My notes say it's also the way to get what's most valuable. We don't realize our value sometimes. We don't realize that um, although we're experiencing hardship, although we're experiencing difficulties, there's a value, there's a purpose in it. And God is saying, you know, just be still, just bear with me and know that I have value, that you have value and I value you is what God is saying. And on the other side of this crushing, what you are experiencing right now is, is going to be, you know, nothing compared to what I have for you. It says, keeping this perspective is how we can be troubled on every side and not distressed. You know, it's really all about our mindset. How are we thinking when we are going through certain situations? What are we, you know, allowing ourselves to think on? The Bible says to think on those things which are lovely, which are pure, and of a good report. You know, oftentimes, though, the enemy will try to get us to, you know, meditate on the negative things that he throws in our mind. And we have to take every thought captive that is in disobedience to Christ, especially when we're going through times of crushing. So, you know, when we look at the olive tree, it's a beautiful reminder to us that that's not how things are going to be forever. On the other side of the harsh wind, we talked about how with the olive tree, even before the, the olives begin to come on the tree, the, the olive tree requires two types of wind, a harsh wind, the east wind and the west wind. And the east wind is the harsh wind. And the west wind is the wind that brings life and um, rain. You know, the same with us. We, we have trials and tribulations, but yet God replenishes us. He restores us through his word. So our crushing is not the end. We have to believe that what God has said he will do, that it will be done. We cannot focus on the problems, right? Today I, I posted about um, how we have three days left in this month. That after the third day, what happened? The resurrection. Jesus. The resurrection happened after the third day. Yes, God has said this is the month of release, and some of you have already experienced some things being released in your life. 
But he said to remind my people that after the third day, there was resurrection. Jesus didn't stay in the grave, but he rose and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The same type of beating and crushing that he experienced on the cross, the, the eternal purpose of it, the, the, that crushing on the cross was not his end outcome. The sole purpose of that was to allow us to have eternal life with him and to be seated in heavenly places with him. And God is reminding us that the crushing is not the end, that there is a resurrection that is going to take place for us. And there are some things that we have buried that God is saying now is the time for resurrection. Now is the time for the grave clothes to come off. Now is the time for Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Now is the time to walk into your destiny. Or do you have all the answers? No. Even, you know, I share this about myself all the time. Even doing these lives, you know, it is not, um, it is not easy for me. You know, I, I've become better at it, I believe. I've, I've gotten a little more used to it, but it, it's still something that I'm not comfortable with. But how many of you know that God does not want us to be comfortable? He, we, we did not, you know, come into this life of being a Christian to be comfortable. Not that he wants us to be uncomfortable, but he wants us to totally depend on him for every single thing that we need. As simple as doing this life, even on tonight, you hear my voice. It's not as, as normal as it used to be, but it was way worse than this today. But I said, you know, I am not canceling this call. God is going to be with me. He, he told me to, to do this series. Tonight is the conclusion of it, and my voice will be fine. And sure enough, you can hear me, you can understand me, and God has honored my prayer, and he has honored my obedience to what he is doing. And that is where we have to be in that time of crushing. We have to allow ourselves to be obedient. You guys know my tagline says, be blessed, but first comes obedience. It is in our obedience that the blessing comes. It is in our obedience that we see the manifestations that we have been believing God for. It is in our obedience that the hand of God moves in our favor and on our behalf. Amen. So on the other side of hardship is a resurrection. Yes, Robin, you're right. A lot can happen in three days. And that's what happens with a lot of us. You know, we, we start out the year and we're all excited, you know, first 90 days, woo, woo, woo. you know, we don't see what's going on and we get a little discouraged. Now we're midpoint in. Some of us are like ready to throw in the towel and God is saying, no, 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 no. He says, I can, I can come in at the very last minute, at the ninth hour, at the 12th hour, whatever hour you want to call it. There are so many people that have testimonies about how it was at the very, very, very last minute that God stepped in and, and moved on their behalf. So our posture has to be one of consistent faith. We talked about this last week about Abraham because he patiently endured, right? 25 years before he actually saw the promise of, of his own son. He patiently endured is what caused him to inherit the promise. And not only did he inherit the promise, but then he lived beyond that many, many years to enjoy his son. So that's another point that God wants us to get is, okay, yes, you've been going through this situation. You've been dealing with this situation for several months, several years perhaps. But he's saying, I am going to bring you out and you are going to be able to enjoy coming out you know unfortunately a lot of times i hear stories about people that work 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 just work so hard and up until the point that they can retire and then they retire and a week later a month later they're gone you know and they don't even get to enjoy it god is saying that is not your story whatever needs to come to an end is coming to an end the conclusion of the matter is that trial that stress, that depression, that, that lack is coming to an end. And it can happen within a matter of three days. There can be a resurrection in your life within a matter of three days. 
but you just have to believe. You have to hold on. You have to stand strong on the word and believe God's promises unto you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, um, also want to look at, let's look at James, the book of James. Book of James, chapter one, starting in verse two. And this is something we generally do not do, but this is what we are called to do when we are experiencing crushing. It says, consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Now I'll be the first to raise my hand. I do not get excited when trials start happening. My sister can tell you the other day, um, on Saturday, I had a catering event. Excuse me. And I had to fry some fish. And my deep fryer would not cut on. You know, you hook it up to the propane. And, you know, I have myself all time. Anybody that knows me knows that, you know, I'm very detailed. I'm very uh, focused when I'm preparing for my catering jobs. And I plan things out. I had checked the propane tanks like three or four times to make sure they were good. And then, you know, I said, okay, I need to start the, the, um, the propane tank, the oil, start heating the oil at a certain time. I go out to do it, what happens? It's not cutting on. I'm like, okay. You know, I, I said to myself, I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna panic. And I walked back in the house and I kept doing some other stuff, you know, and the real deal about it was that I was also preparing some food on the grill for this for this event mind you my husband is not home often he is home so he can help me if, if something should happen and I get in a bind so I go back out and try the um, fryer again still nothing and then of course I'm like okay God I need you to help me I need you to help me but even in the midst of my calling on God I need you to help me I began to panic and like okay well you got to come up with something just in case it doesn't work you know and that's what we do we, we step in sometimes too fast and try to fix things, right? So what did I do? I called my sister and I was thinking, oh Lord, she's gonna have to go to work. She's not gonna be able to help me. But you know, fortunately she was available. But while she was preparing to come to me, the Holy Spirit, right? The one who leads and guides us into all truth responded to my prayer, Lord, I need you to help me and reminded me of something that I needed to do on that Friday. So when she got here, I said, hold on, let me just try one other thing. And lo and behold, sure enough, God helped me. Everything worked and it worked out fine. I wasn't late to my event. But I say all that to say that when that trial came, as, as, as trivial or, or minor as it may seem to you, you know, this is my business. And I was like, I cannot be late. It was a huge event, you know. So I just was like, God, I need your help. But what God is saying to us in James is consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. He says, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance. And again, I'm reading from the Amplified. It says it produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work. The King James Version um, uses the word patience for endurance. Why? So that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. So the next time you find yourself in a trial, next time you find yourself in a place of where you feel like you're being crushed, I want you to just pause and think about the scripture and count it all joy. Knowing that whatever you are dealing with, God is using that to develop something in you. God is using that to, per to perfect you. God is using that to perfect your character and to perfect your faith, right? My little situation on Saturday, which on Saturday, it did not appear to be little, but it has, it has helped me even with my faith walk. It has reminded me that when I say, God, I need you to help me, right? I didn't have to go into these and thou's and this long drawn out prayer 
I just called on the name of the Lord and what did he do? He helped me. He sent the Holy Spirit, my helper, to lead and guide me into all truth. So your crushing is not the end, but it has a purpose. There's a glory that will come after this. So I just wanted to share all of that with you. I don't know. I, I wanted my girlfriend to actually come online and to just share what she had experienced um, over the past couple of days about crushing. Um, I don't know if she can come on. I don't know, Robin, if you can hear me or if you're able to like, that you want to add yourself. If not, I'll try to um, send you the link from the Zoom to connect you. And send me a text or something if you can. Um, maybe I'll just do that and try to send you um, send you the link from the um, Zoom and you can connect that way. Cause she has an awesome testimony, guys. Um, so hopefully we can get her to connect. Let me see. She sent me a message. Let me see. Okay. I just sent it to your phone. Hopefully it'll be easy. Um, now the trick is the people on Facebook live probably won't be able to hear you, but they may, they should be able to hopefully. Let's see if it worked. So, um, July 29th is a uh, bittersweet day for me. It's my oldest niece's birthday. But it's also the day that my dear friend Steve got his wings. And Robin is actually Steve's wife. And I just wanted her to come on this morning. I thought about, uh, you know, crushing is not the end. And there's two ladies in my life that lost their husbands. Um, Robin is one and Connie Gilmore is another. But what I have seen in their lives is that crushing truly is not the end. Um, I'm going to try to send the link again, Robin. But like I said, what I've, what I've seen in their lives is truly that crushing is not the end. And just in these past couple of days, uh, <laughs> she's telling me to tell the story. I can't tell it like you tell it. Uh, in these past couple of days, she has, you know, really experienced the glory of God. Let me see, I'm trying to, um, trying to connect her, but it's not working. Okay, so I was talking to her today and she was sharing with me about, you know, how she um, had not planned to even come up here. She's relocated from the area, but she hadn't even planned to come up here to um, visit um, her husband's grave, but she came up you know, to drive her girlfriend back up here and experience some car trouble. She had been contemplating um, purchasing a new car for over a year. And she said she happened to um, listen to a sermon or maybe went to the service the other day at Rankin um, Memorial. And the preacher was talking about, you need an upgrade. You need an upgrade. You know, and she was like, wow. You know, I'm thinking about buying a car. My car is, have, has issues. Now, what's so interesting about the car um, issue is that she had just had it serviced. It gets on the road, and lo and behold, there's, there's no oil in the car. If you know anything about a car, if there's no oil in it, the engine, you know, that means you have engine problems, right? Just like us, we're talking about the, the purpose of crushing, you know, 
if 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 you squeeze the olive and no oil comes out, there's a problem, right? It won't operate the way it should. So nevertheless, she took the car to the shop and she started looking, you know, at another car. The car salesman was saying, hey, we have this car. It's way out of her budget. You know, she has a budget. It's like $4,000 or so over her budget. And, um, you know, she test drives it and everything and tells the, the dealer, you know, the car is nice. But, you know, I'm, I can't get the cards not within my budget. And the salesman said to her, but don't you need an upgrade? And she, you know, immediately, it took her back to the message that she had received, you know, when she listened to that message about needing an upgrade and that God is ready to upgrade you. And, you know, you've been living um, on your husband's provision that he left for you, even though he's gone. And now you're going to live in the provision, provision that I have for you. How many of you know that Jehovah Jireh, God is Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider, right? And that God specifically told her that he was going to upgrade her. So long story short, she ends up purchasing this car. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a brand new car, but it's newer than the car that she has. It's the top line of the, of the model that she had, because all the bells and whistles, um, very, very low interest rate. And, you know, she's just in awe of what God has done for her. You know, I, I really wish she could have gotten on to share the story herself, but, you know, none of us expected Steve to get his wings. We expected him to recover from his surgery and to still be here with us laughing and, and you know, joking and all of that stuff. But in the midst of her crushing, right, four years worth of crushing, God said, your crushing is coming to an end. I'm upgrading you. I'm going to continue to provide for you as never before. She has to be. She does consulting work and has, has clients. You know, she hasn't missed a beat. Yes, her heart is broken. Yes, she misses her husband. But she is a true testimony that the crushing is not the end. And I just wanted to share her testimony with you guys because, like I said, to me, that's probably the most traumatic experience anyone could have to lose your spouse, especially, you know, we're, we're young, still got a lot, a lot of life in us. And for that to happen so unexpectedly, um, she, you know, she, she, just, she just has endured and God has covered her and has, has protected her. Like we talked about last week, that even while we're in the trenches, God is there with us. She types in, she says, my husband will be proud. God provided a new season, a new beginning and a new anointing. And even for it to happen within, you know, right here in the month of release, think about it guys, in the month of release, in these last three days, God has done a new thing in her life. We are about to approach the eighth month, which is the month of new beginnings. And Robin, I just speak into your life. <clears throat> And, and tell you that this is just the beginning. God has so much more in store for you. And with your ministry, with your, with your work, God has so much more in store for you. This is just the beginning of the new beginnings that he has for you. And so I just wanted to encourage all of you on, on tonight listening to know that your crushing is not the end. And I'm going to share um, a couple of things from... Bishop Jake's book, you know, our, our theme actually came from his book. And even as we're talking about Robin, he has a, uh, an account here about um, when he met Coretta Scott King. And he says, as her crushing fermented into the wine of experience, wisdom, and influence, she discovered a flavor she could not have anticipated at the time of her crushing. God wants us to know, yes, we are going through, but he is crushing us like grapes. He is pressing us like olives to, to produce in us a sweet wine, a sweet flavor, a sweet aroma. He is, he is pressing us. He is crushing us in order to produce the oil, the oil that will be used to be a bomb 
of Gilead, a balm of healing for someone else, the oil that will be used to bring deliverance into someone else's life, the wine that will be used to bring joy to the one that's depressed. So if you are experiencing a time of crushing, remember what the book of James said, to count it all joy, because that is not your end. There is glory on the other side of this. Um, Bishop Jakes also says that for some, crushing has become a hopeless cycle from which there is no escape. If you're crushed long enough, you accept that weight as your reality rather than a temporary predicament. God has said, do not accept anything that is less than what I have promised you in my word. Yes, the struggle is real, right? We got all these cliches. The struggle is real. But was, stop saying the struggle is real. How about saying I am more than a over, uh, more than a conqueror? That I am overcoming. That I am getting through this. That I am above only. How about saying those things instead of getting so caught up in what sounds cute and, and and trendy and start speaking the word of God over your life as you're going through these situations and watch God move on your behalf. Because why? Your crushing is not the end. Bishop Jake says that you're a sign that points others to the God who transformed you. When we're in that state of, of, of crushing, right, the process, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about don't fight the process because there's purpose in the process. That process does what? It transforms us. Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, be ye, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? In the renewing of your mind. And some of you are probably saying, okay, Reverend Robin, yeah, that sounds good, but it's not easy. It's not easy. I know it's not easy, but it can be done. Why? Because God's word tells us that it can be done. God's word tells us that in this world, you may have tribulation, but take joy because I overcame the world. Jesus himself, who went through the worst crushing ever, says, take joy when you're going through it. Because if he overcame, we can overcome. Why? Because we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Christ. We have access and more importantly, we have authority in this earth. And it is time for us to exercise the authority that God has given us to tread on every serpent, every scorpion. What does that mean? Everything that does not line up with the word of God, everything that comes to attack us, everything that comes to tear us down, we are to exercise the authority that God has given us and we are to trample on it and we are to remind the enemy that he is defeated, that his, his assignment against us shall not prosper, right? I think I posted a, uh, a little while ago last week sometime, don't be the weapon that is formed, that is causing, you know, that is prospering against you. We quote that scripture all the time, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But oftentimes, we are the very weapon that we form against ourselves, and it is prospering. And how are we forming it? We are forming it simply by what we say out of our mouth. We are forming it by what we think in our, in our mind. We are forming it by not reading our word and not spending time with God. We are forming it by um, allowing ourselves to be in seclusion and, and to get away from people that we know can encourage us and help us. But God is saying your crushing is not the end. And if we would go into that crushing with the mindset of, of it's not the end, God, what is the purpose that you have for me as I'm going through this? What, am, what, what is the glory that is going to come out of it? We will see the hand of God move on our behalf. So I just wanted to, um, just wanted to encourage you guys um, tonight, and I'm going to read this last thing from Bishop Jake's book. It says, never allow the lying words of the enemy to take root and poison the wine God wants to produce in your life. I'm going to read that again. Never allow the lying words of the enemy to take root and poison the wine God wants to produce in your life. In those moments when everything falls apart, when you don't know how you can go on, or even if you will go on, he says, please remember this message from my heart. Your crushing is not the end. It's only the beginning. So I pray that you all were blessed by that. I pray that you all were encouraged by that. Um, 
even though I, I, I shared Robin's story, I hope you were able to really get something um, from her story um, because truly God is moving on her behalf and truly um, crushing is not the end. So I want to take this time to open up um, the lines. And if you guys are on Facebook, if you have any questions or any comments, if you're on Zoom on the webinar, if you have a question or comment, um, you can go ahead and take those. You can just type your um, question or comment in. Hey, Pastor Todd. Hey, Monica. Hey, Tamara. Glad y'all joined in. Any comments, any questions? I hope you guys were blessed. We good? No comments, no questions? Okay, how about any prayer requests? Y'all know we can't end this series on crushing without prayer. And I'm gonna do my, my best for my voice to hold out. Any prayer requests? Pray for your healing. Pray for my healing. Oh, thank you, sis. Yes, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I don't know what's going on with my throat, but it is well. I will not be stopped. Amen. All right, well, let's pray, guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We magnify you. We extol you, Lord God. We are just so honored, Lord God, that we have this privilege to come before your throne of grace. You said that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help in our time of need. So Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you are omniscient, that you are all knowing, that you are omnipresent, that you are always there and you are omnipotent, God, that you are all powerful. And we thank you, Lord God, that the same power that you have, Lord God, even that same resurrection power that caused Jesus to be raised from the dead, we have that same power. And we thank you for the resurrection power that is within us. We thank you, Lord God, that every dry bone, Lord God, that is in the valley, Lord God, that we will speak to it and those bones shall come together and they shall live in the name of Jesus. We thank you that everything that we have buried, like a dog buries a bone, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that those things that we have buried that need to live are in the, are in the process, Lord God, of being resurrected even now as we pray, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Lord, I pray right now for those that are still in the midst of their crushing, Lord God, that you will remind them, Father, that you are the great potter, that you are the one who works the clay, that you, you, you remake them and reshape them until they come out like you want them to come out. Lord, we thank you for the fermentation process. We thank you for the cleansing and the soaking process, Lord God, because it is in that process, Lord God, that we become the wine that you are desiring. It is in that process, Lord God, that we become the oil that you can use to pour out on your people, God. So even now, we thank you in advance for new wine, for sweet wine, for fresh fresh oil, Lord God, and sweet water, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on these people, Lord God, that have listened or shall listen later, oh God. I pray for every household that is rec represented tonight, Lord God. I decree and declare right now that the crushing is not the end, that the crushing is not the end, that your people are coming out. I decree and declare right now that financial breakthroughs are happening, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that there is a release, Lord God, for your people, Lord God, to come out of their debt. I thank you that you are giving them divine strategies, Lord God, to, to come out of debt, Lord God. I thank you that you are releasing healing, Lord God, where healing is needed, oh God. Father, touch your people from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I speak to every body, every physical body that has dealt with infirmity or is dealing with infirmity. And I say, body, be made whole in the name of Jesus. We release the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus that is above the name of cancer, the above the name of diabetes, the above the name of migraines, above the name of fibroids, above the name of lupus, above the name of fibromyalgia, above every single name, every single sickness and the disease, we decree and declare that healing is the children's bread. And Father, as we eat of your word, we eat of your healing, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, that it is your desire 
that we walk in divine health for your word says that it is by the stripes of Jesus. We are and we were healed. So we walk in our healing, oh God. I thank you that even myself, Lord God, that whatever is going on with my throat, that it is temporary, oh God, because I am healed. I thank you, Lord God, that every household that is represented in here, Lord God, that the spirit of unity prevails. I come against the spirit of division right now of husband and wife, of siblings, Lord God. I, I decree and declare, Lord God, a spirit of unity, a spirit of peace to rest upon every household, God. And I pray right now, even especially, Lord God, I use Robin McCoy as a point of contact for every widow out there, Lord God. Father, that you will touch their hearts, that you will mend their broken heart, that you will exchange the garment of, of sadness, Lord God, for the garment of praise, that you will launch them into their new beginning, just as you have done for her, God, that you will give them a new season, oh God, that you will give them a new anointing, oh God, Father, that they will understand that this crushing that they are experiencing is not eternal, Lord God, but it is only temporary, and that, that, that you have a plan and a purpose, Lord God, for their life. I thank you, Lord God for these United States of America, God. We take the time to pray for these United States of America. You said to pray, Lord God, for our land, Lord God, to pray for our leaders, that there may be peace in our land, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those who are in the position to make decisions about the lives of the people of this country, oh God. Father, that you would take the heart of man and turn it, Lord God, that you would turn it back towards you, Lord God. Father, that the decisions that are made, that the spirit of, of animosity, that the spirit of racism, we cut it down now in the name of Jesus, and we release the spirit of love in these United States of America, God. We decree and declare, oh God, that hatred will, will not prevail, but the love of God shall prevail in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our churches, oh God, Father, that you would release a fresh anointing over your shepherds, Lord God. Father, that they would not just teach a watered down word, Lord God, but that they would preach and teach with boldness, Lord God, that they would not be afraid to tell the truth because Jesus told the truth, that, that they will deliver words that will teach your people how to come out of this poverty mindset, Lord God, and to know and how to use the gifts that you have deposited in them, Lord God. That for you said that you have given us the power to get wealth, and we thank you, Lord God, that as you give us the divine strategies, Lord God, to get the wealth that you have deposited in us, Lord God, Father, that we will use that wealth to upbuild your kingdom, Lord God, that we will not become materialistic with it, Lord God, but we will continue to sow. You said that you give seed to the sower, oh God, and I pray for those, Lord God, who get the seed, but then they eat it, oh God. Help us not to eat the seed, but to understand that the seed is to be sown, that you bless us to be a blessing, Lord God, so I thank you that, that, that as we approach this eighth month, Lord God, as we walk into a month of new beginnings, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that we have a new mindset. I thank you, Lord God, that we no longer uh, are settled with the way things have been, that we will not repeat the cycle, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that we will be the first millionaires in our families, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that our children will be above their peers, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that every need shall be met according to your riches and glory, God. Father, we just thank you and we just praise you and we bless you. We thank you, Lord God, that crushing is not the end, but it is just the beginning. We thank you that crushing on the other side, there's glory after this. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you never leave us nor forsake us. And now, Lord God, I just pray for the, for the people on this call, Lord God. If there's anyone that comes across this feed that does not know you, I just pray right now, I would just say to you, even as you are watching, just say these words, Father, I have sinned and I need a savior. I believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died, was buried, and is now resurrected and seated at your right hand. I invite Jesus into my life now. And if you repeated that prayer, you have come into the household of God. You have received salvation. And I encourage you to find a church home where you can be fed, where you can learn the word, where you can continue to grow. Uh, one of our, our main priority here at Come Up Higher Ministries 
is to help people to grow in their faith and to come up higher in their relationship with God. So we'd be more than happy to help get you in the right place into the right church. You can simply email us at info at uphire.org and we can help get you on your path. So for everyone that tuned in tonight, I thank you for watching. I thank you for um, your support. If you would like to even um, support us financially, we have several ways that you can do that as well. The easiest way is on our Facebook page. If you just click the um, contact us button, it'll take you straight to GiveLify. You can also donate via our website, which is uphire.org and click the donate button there. We have PayPal and you can do paypal.me slash come up higher. Or you can even cash up us and our cash tag is the dollar sign, the number four come up higher. So I, again, I just pray that you guys were blessed. I really enjoyed this series. Um, as you know, we've actually, uh, we're, we're transitioning. I'm trying to get away from uh, doing everything on Facebook Live. We're transitioning to doing the webinars and actually having the series available for you where you can actually purchase them and then go back and watch them at your leisure and, and get all the notes and, and everything. So I, I encourage you to look into that opportunity as well. If you um, go on our website to uphire.org, you'll see how to, to um, be a part of that. Just click on the um, education and, and spiritual growth um, tab under services, and it'll take you to our Up Higher Academy where you can see all of our classes that we're offering. But again, I'm so grateful that you all joined. I pray that you were blessed. And until our next series, um, we'll talk then. Just continue to watch your email, uh, watch um, social media, because I'll keep you guys abreast of what's coming up next. I'm thinking about doing something actually for the wives next um, and those that are thinking about getting married, but I'm just waiting to kind of hear from God on that. So again, God bless you all and have a blessed night. Bye-bye.